the volumetric analysis for this year's NECO chemistry practical is on HNO3, that's trouser nitric fiber seed, and sodium trioxocarbonate 4, which means that it is an acid based titration, unlike what we did in YA, which was a redox titration. Fine. So we'll be looking at the likely questions that the students can encounter based on this titration, based on the titration between HNO3 and Na2CO3. So before we start, let's look at the likely formulae we may be making use of in this tutorial, right? These are volumetric analysis formulae, right? We have four of them here, and the minimum we can make use of in solving any problem in the volumetric analysis is two. So now the first one is concentration in grams per dm cube, which equals to concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. Well, the second one is the almighty titration formula, which is CAVA over CBVB equals to NA over NB. And the third one is number of moles equals to concentration in moles per dm cube times volume in dm cube. And the last one is percentage by mass of an element in a compound, which is given by mass of the element in the compound, divided by mass of the compound times 100%. Now, these formulae are based on this titration and based on the instruction released by NECO, right? We were not told in the instruction that any of the substance is hydrated. Neither were we told that any of the substance is a mixture. Are we together? So that's why we are not bringing in percentage, purity, or water of uh, crystallization. But if, if at all you want to learn about the water of crystallization, how to calculate water of crystallization, we made a video on that based on the YA 2022 examination, chemistry practical examination. So we've added the link in the description to that video, how to calculate water of what? Crystallization. The first question says, A is a solution containing 0.200 mole per dm cube of trials nitrate 5 RC. That's A is a solution containing 0 0.200 mole per dm cube of trials nitrate 5 acid okay solution b contains 4.2 grams b contains 4.2 grams of x2co3 per dm cube fine now what are you asked to do put a into the bullet pipette 20 cm cube or 25 cm cube of b into a clinical flask and titrate with a Repeat the titration to obtain concordant titer values. Tabulate your results and calculate the average volume of A used. From your results and information provided, calculate the 1. Concentration of B in moles per dm cube. 2. Molar mass of X2CO3. 3. Relative atomic mass of X. 4. Percentage by mass of X in X2CO3. And you are given the equation of reaction as shown on the screen. Now, Normally, if you have a question like this, where you have an unknown in the formula of one of the reactants, either the acid or the what base, there's every likelihood that we'll be asked to calculate the molar mass of the compound and also uh, calculate the uh, relative atomic mass of the unknown. And if possible, you can also be asked to calculate the percentage by mass, percentage by mass of the unknown element in the word compound. Remember that. These questions that we are solving are not the actual questions that will come out in your NECO examination. These are just simulated word questions. So don't cram. As we always advise you, don't cram. Just understand our steps. Follow our principles or understand our concepts, right? Instead of cramming. Fine. So now, let's start. We are asked to do what? Calculate the concentration of B in most per dm cube. Now look at this. Look at this. We are given A as 0 0.200 mole per dm cube of what HNO3 and B as 4.2 grams of X2CO3 per dm cube. Now, from this, this information, what, what can we say about A and B? Or what, uh, what other information can we get about A and B? Now, look at this. From this information, we have the concentration in moles per dm cube of what? A. 
right? We have the concentration in moles per dm cube of A, and and that's all. That's the only thing we have about uh, about A, and also the formula of what A. From the formula of A, we can calculate the what the molar mass of what A, right? Fine. Now here for this for B, we have what we call the concentration of B in what in grams per dm cube. Concentration of B in grams per dm cube, right? Now, we just need to calculate what concentration. We are asked to calculate the concentration of what B in moles per dm cube. We are asked to calculate the concentration of B in moles per dm cube. So now, based on this formula and information provided, which of this formula do you think? we can use to calculate the concentration of B in moles per dm cube. Now, let's see. If we come here, look at the first formula, concentration in grams per dm cube equals to concentration in moles per dm cube times smaller mass. Do we have the concentration of B in moles per dm cube? Yes, that's 1.2 grams per dm cube, right? Good. Now, then, do we have the molar mass of B? Can we calculate the molar mass of B? No, we cannot. So since we don't know the value of X, since we don't know the value of X, it means that we cannot calculate the, what, the molar mass of what of B. Therefore, we cannot use formula one. Now let's look at the second formula. C A V over C B V equals to N A over what? N B. C A is the concentration of A in moles per dm cube, which is given to us as 0.2. 0, 0 moles per dm cube. Now, V8 will be your tighter word values, your tighter value, which you will obtain from your word titration. So, you can always get that, right? Oh, that will be handy. VB is the volume of P per tubes, which means that we also know the value of what VB. And NA over NB is the mole ratio of the acid to base in the equation of what reaction, which is what, which in this case is what 2 ratio what 1 is 2 ratio 1 because the equation of reaction is what x2 x2 co3 hs plus what 2 hno3 remember when an acid reacts with a triazo carbonate form it forms what a salt a salt water and what co2 what gas are we there so now you know, to calculate the concentration of B in moles per dm cube. Now, let's, this is another formula that, that contains moles per dm cube, right? So, let's see whether you can use this formula to calculate the concentration of B in moles per dm cube. This would be what number of moles cause what? Concentration in moles per dm cube times volume in dm cube. Do we know the number of moles of B? No. This is not the number of moles we are talking about here. The number of moles here is the actual number of moles that reacted and took part in the titration, not the number of moles in the balanced chemical what equation. Are we together? Fine. Now, so let's now. So it means that the only thing you can use, the only formula that you can use to calculate the concentration of being moles per dm cube is the almighty uh, titration word formula. So let's do it. We have C A. V A over what C B V B equals to what N A over what N B. So after that, what are we to do next? You replace this mole ratio with what the actual what value, right? That's the next step. That's C A V A over C B V B equals to what? What's our N A here? Two. Our NA is 2 over what? 1. Right? That's 2 over what? 1. Fine. Then, the next step is to do what? Make what we are looking for subject of what? Formula, which is what? CB. So, we make CB subject of formula. That would be what? CA VA times what? 1 all over what? 2 times what? VB. Now, since we are not expected to have the same title value, 
in all our calculations, right? So, it's all in our different centers. We are going to work based on our different title value. So, we are going to be solving this question based on what? VA. We are not going to add, use any particular word value. So, what you will do is just fix in your own values there. The value, average title, the average title value for your center and then go ahead and solve your final word answer. So, yes, C B is supposed to C A V A times 1 all over what 2 times what V B. If we substitute here, what's our C A? Our C A is 0 0.2 our V A is what? We don't know. So, it has the test of V A times 1 all over what? 2 times what? 25. So, if we evaluate this, we'll obtain 0 0.2, 0.2 divided by what? 50. We'll obtain 0.004 VA. 0.004 VA. And what again? What again? In moves by what? D and K. What are we expected to take note of here? Now, this answer must be in what three significant word figure, right? This answer must be in three significant figure. How do we end the marks in this question? Here, you end one mark here for stating this formula with this actual mole ratio two over one. Then, for correct for making C what you're looking for subject of formula, we end another one mark, right? And another one mark and then correct substitution gives us another word one mark and for, of course the final answer in three significant figures with the correct word number of moles gives us the final word one mark so the next question says molar mass of what x2 molar mass of x2 co3 the molar mass of the base x2 co3 so now since we do not know the value of x, there's no way you can use the, norm, the sum of the relative atomic masses of the element to calculate our word molar mass. So coming back to this set of formulae, which formula here contains what molar mass and also has properties or parameters that have been provided or we have calculated, right? Or that's whose values we have what calculated. Now, this one has no molar mass. This one has no molar mass. This one has no molar mass. Do you know that has molar mass is what? This. The first formula. Now, and here the molar mass is what? The formula is what? Concentration in grams per dm cube equals concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. We have been given the concentration in grams per dm cube of B. Right? We've been given the concentration in grams per dm cube of B from the question. And we have just calculated a concentration in moles per dm cube of B, right? So what now? What do we do? Molar mass of what? Molar mass of B, of oh sorry, of X2CO3 will be given as what? We make, if we make molar mass subject of formula here, what will that be? That will be what? Concentration in grams per dm cube divided by what? Concentration in moles per dm cube. No, this formula, students are always fond of making mistakes with this formula. They are always fond of, instead of writing as concentration in grams per dm cube, also concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. They always write, they always mix it up as concentration in grams per dm cube, also concentration in moles per dm cube divided by molar mass. Now, this is the trick. You don't need to cram, or you, can, you cannot memorize the formula. Just play around with the units. How? Concentration in grams per dm cube is what grams per dm cube, right? Grams over dm cube is said to be equal to what concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. So, mole, that's moles over what dm cube times molar. What's the formula for molar mass? Grams per mole. Grams, you know, this is more or less like a dimensional analysis. So, moles over dm cube times grams over mole. What would that give us if we evaluate this? What do we get? Grams per what? dm cube. Which means that concentration in grams per dm cube equals to what? Concentration in moles per dm cube times molar mass. 
Oh, also, like our molar mass now. Our molar mass, we don't know what molar mass is. But we know the, we don't know the exact formula for molar mass, but we know the unit. So, unit is grams per mole. How can we play around with grams per dm cube and moles per dm cube to give us what grams per mole? Let's see. Grams over dm cube. If we make it times, sorry, grams over dm cube. If we make it times uh, mole over dm cube, what will we get? We'll get what? Gram mole per dm raised by what? Six. Is that the same as the molar mass? Formula for molar mass? No. So that that is wrong. So let's now come back and now divide. Divided by what? Mole per dm cube. If we evaluate this. Over more, so that gives us what grams per, which is the correct formula for calculation of molar mass from concentration in grams per dm cube and concentration in moles per dm cube is what concentration in grams per dm cube divided by what uh, concentration in moles per dm cube. Okay, so having confirmed that, let's now go ahead and solve for the molar mass. So what is the concentration of this guy, of the base in grams per dm cube? That's 4.2 grams per dm cube. That gives us what? That would be 4.2 over, what is the concentration of the moles in moles per dm cube? The calculated concentration, that is what? 0.004VA. I will evaluate this. That would be 4.2 divided by 0 0.004 of our VA. That would be what? That would give us 1050 all over what? Your VA. In what? In grams per what? More. Very important. You must add your unit. Grams per mole because you're asked to calculate what? Molar mass. Then, the next question, that to calculate the relative Atomic mass of what? X. So the relative atomic mass of X will be given as what? Remember, we have calculated the molar, we would have calculated the molar mass of uh, X2CO3. So it means that to now calculate the relative atomic mass of X will now be a sum of uh, um, what do you call it? A summation of all the relative atomic masses of what? Uh, X two CO three. So now let's let's just for the sake of this uh, calculation, let's just assume that our VA here is um, uh, what do you call it. Um, let's assume a value for our VA. Let's say uh, ten cm cube. Let's say 10, 10, uh, 10 .5 cm cube, right? Okay, that's ten point five. If we assume so 10.5, if we assume that our V is 10.5 cm cube, it means that this guy will be what about 100 what uh, grams per what mole. That's if our V is what 10.5 cm what cube. So still our V as 10.5 cm. It's just, it's just an assumption anyway. So don't say that's what your V, your title value should be. I don't know. So now, um, so now I, I want us to we are using it to calculate the value of what. X. That is to calculate the value of we need it to calculate the value of what? X. So it means that molar mass of X, molar mass of what X2CO3 will be equal to what? 2X, that is the atomic mass of X times 2 plus what? Uh, uh, let's, do it, let's do it this way. We go to what? AR of X times 2 plus AR of carbon plus what? AR of oxygen times what? 3. So that gives us what? 2X 
plus 1 times 12 plus what? Uh, 16 times 3. Right? This is us 2 2x plus 12 plus 48. 48. So that will give us what? Um, 12 plus 48 is uh, that's uh, 60, if I'm not mistaken. So this gives us what? 2x plus 60. Is it not? Fine. So but our relative molecular mass is uh, relative, uh, sorry, our molar mass was what? 100 grams, right? Per mole. So it means that it means that 100 equals to what? 2x plus what? 60. 2x plus 60. So now, what do you now do? You solve for x. This will be 2x equals to 100 minus 60. Right? It gives us what? 40. So our x is equal to what? 40 over 2. It gives us 20. Right? It gives us 20. So you know that the element that is 20. Uh, whose relative atomic mass is 20? May I don't know. May I don't know. No. May I don't know. That's what we have from uh, title value that we assume to be 10.5. Okay, remember, this is relative atomic, we are relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass of an element is a ratio. So it has no unit. So you're not expected to add any unit here. You are, you are not adding any grams. If you add a, uh, any unit here, let's say grams, kilograms, or whatever, you score a very beautiful zero. So to just take note of that. All right. So the next, the last question there says that you should calculate the what? The percentage by mass of X in X2 CO3. So we're going to make use of, let's clean. Wipe the board very fast. So, um, percentage by mass. Percentage by mass of X. Percentage by mass of X in X2 CO3 will be given as what? Total mass of X. Total mass of X over what? Molar mass of X2 CO3 times 100 over what? Which is this formula here. Which is this formula here. So, that will be what? What is the mass of X? Total mass of X is what? Um, 2X. 2x over x2 CO3 times 100 over 1. Our 2x is from the body calculator. 2x is what? 40. And our x2 CO3 is a 100. 40 over 100 times 100 over 1. So that gives us what? 40%. Mean that x element x makes up 40% of the compound. Alright, so that's that on question one.